In this video, we will look at how an intercontinental ballistic missile like the Minuteman 3 of the USA works. First, we'll look at its major parts, then how it is launched, then what happens during its flight until it reaches its target. There are different kinds of ICBM, but in this video, we'll only look at the Minuteman 3 or LGM-30G, an American land-based ICBM. This is one of the nuclear triad of the U.S. An ICBM is designed to deliver nuclear weapons like thermonuclear or hydrogen warheads like these ones. This is how huge the Minuteman 3 is compared to a person. It has a length of 18.3 meters and a mass of 36,030 kilograms. It can travel up to 10,000 kilometers, more than enough distance to reach Russia, but a little bit short to reach mainland China. What's amazing is that it can fly up to a speed of Mach 23 or 24,000 kilometers per hour. Minuteman 3 has different parts such as first stage motor, which has a maximum thrust of 200,400 pounds of force. For reference, the engines of the F-22 have a max thrust of 35,000 pounds of force. Second stage motor with a maximum thrust of 45,600 pounds of force. Third stage motor with a maximum thrust of 34,500 pounds of force. These three rocket boosters use solid fuel. Connecting all of the stages are called interstages. This is the post-boost vehicle, or payload bus, or fourth stage, which is responsible for delivering the warheads to the final point. It is comprised of gas storage assembly, two propellant storage assembly, which contains the oxidizer and the fuel, gimbal axial engine that provides thrust to the payload bus and 10 altitude-controlled engines for the payload bus to be able to maneuver. This is the missile guidance system, which is comprised of missile guidance computer, which computes the navigation data provided by the gyro-stabilized platform. This computer also sends commands to all the parts of the missile. Power distribution unit, missile guidance set control, gyro-stabilized platform which measures the position, orientation, and acceleration of the missile. These are the data that the gyro sends to the missile guidance computer for calculation. This missile guidance system is responsible for making sure the missile follows the flight path. This is the re-entry vehicle called W87. It is a hydrogen or thermonuclear warhead. This warhead is comprised of carbon nose tip, contact sensor, arming and fusing with battery, radar altimeter and antenna, firing system, nuclear warhead comprised of primary stage and secondary stage. The secondary stage has different spheres like uranium-238 or 235, lithium deuteride as fuel, and uranium-235 as spark plug. The primary stage is comprised of different spheres like chemical explosives, beryllium, plutonium-239, and deuterium-tritium gas mixture. These two stages are suspended in a polystyrene foam and are encased in a uranium-238 case. And this is where the neutron generator and deuterium tritium reservoir are located. This is the spin gas generator and spin nozzle for stabilization. This hydrogen warhead uses a different design as its secondary stage is a sphere compared to older bombs design which has a cylindrical secondary stage. Although their shapes are different, they contain almost the same parts and the mechanism is the same. Now, we already have made a video talking about how exactly a hydrogen bomb works. 
Watch this video so that you understand the details on how it works. And this is the shroud that covers the re-entry vehicle. Now, this is how the ICBM works. As soon as the launch order is received, most likely from the country's president, these two officer crews will check the launch instructions. Then, they will set the flight path and launcher selector switches. After that, the two officers will insert each of their own keys and simultaneously turn them, therefore initiating the automatic launch sequence. After 60 seconds, the missile lifts using the first stage motor. At this point, the missile is already fully automated using its missile guidance system flight computer. This means that the crews on the ground can no longer control the missile. This was done so that it cannot be hacked by the enemies. Now, the MGS flight computer will send a command to the thrust vector control of stage 1 motor to maneuver the missile to the flight path. After 60 seconds or when the missile reaches an altitude of 24 kilometers, the stage 1 motor separates and the stage 2 motor is ignited. The shroud is also jettisoned. After 120 seconds, the second stage motor separates and the stage 3 motor ignites. Then, 180 seconds later, or when the missile reaches the altitude of 190 kilometers, the stage 3 motor separates and the engine of the payload bus or stage 4 is activated. The stage 3 motor separates and the engine of the payload bus or stage 4 is activated. At this point, the payload bus is already in outer space. When the payload bus reaches the designated final point, the MGS flight computer pre-arms the re-entry vehicles. They are called re-entry vehicles because they re-enter the Earth's atmosphere from outer space. Afterwards, the payload bus adjusts its position so that the RVs can be set to its targets. After setting their trajectories, the shafts are released first in order to conceal the RVs from the enemy radars. Then, the re-entry vehicles are released from the payload bus. Upon their release, the spin nozzles activate, therefore stabilizing each RV. While the RVs are flying, they will simultaneously arm therefore activating the fusing system. It will reach its target while spinning. When the radar altimeter detects the designated altitude, the warhead is detonated or what we call an air burst. It can also do a ground burst because it has a contact sensor which detonates the warhead when that sensor hits a hard surface. If you want to know the details of how a hydrogen or thermonuclear warhead explodes, then watch this very detailed video of ours. This kind of ICBM can destroy a large city because of how strong its hydrogen warheads are. The W87 Mod 0 can generate 300 kilotons of explosive force and the Mod 1 can generate 475 kilotons of explosive force. For reference, the Fat Man was only able to generate 21 kilotons. And this is how an intercontinental ballistic missile works. Watch these videos if you want to see a very detailed explanation on how atomic bombs like Fat Man and Little Boy work. The bombs that were dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan.